Hi, I'm Jennifer Johnson. I'm one of Christian Standard's contributing editors. I also write for the magazine, and today I have the privilege of interviewing my friend Mel McGowan to talk about what he's doing with churches, helping them create sacred spaces that incorporate their story into the design. And we're right here in the shadow of Disneyland, and he's got some interesting stories and insights to tell us about that from his years at Disney. So I'm just going to jump right in. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Plainjo Studios and about your work with some churches. I, I, I noticed you put on Facebook that almost all the headliners at this year's event are people that you've worked with. In, yeah, in it recent really years. was kind of humbling and shocking to realize that, that kind of been around the block, I guess, and incurred some brain damage over the years. Right. But, so for the six yeah. people watching who don't know you, okay. tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. Well. Um, Really, since uh, early days at Disney, I mean, it, it, in the way, way back time machine, uh, God's kind of taken me down this weird path of, of learning how to tell stories, um, which sounds kind of, you know, trite and like a lot of people do that, and especially that's the theme of the Better NACC, story, and right. when it's the theme of the NACC, you know, it's, it's, it's been out there for a while, but <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned is that uh, great storytellers, whether it's uh, the leader of a cause, like mm -hmm. a, a lot of the megachurch pastors that are right. the headliners this year, whether it's a CEO of a corporation, um, one of my personal models of leadership is guys that have the ability to tell a great story, right? right? Uh, internally to their, you know, build their culture and externally to connect the market um, and their audience. Well, guys like Walt Disney were smart enough back in the day to realize that, yeah, they've got a gifting, um, but that verbal storytelling gift can be augmented and actually could and should be augmented with guys that might be better spatial storytellers than they are, better artists, better architects, better you know, production designers. And so um, what, uh, you know, at Imagineering, Walt had surrounded himself and created this great organization that we call Imagineering. Um, and that's really kind of what we've continued to do at Plain Joe, started it 15 years ago. And um, again, Motley Crew, artists, architects, MBAs, accounts, you know, <laughs> uh, that come alongside corporate and cause-oriented storytellers and help them translate their stories and, we call it three dimensions uh, from the ether to the environment. So, um, you know, the, the ideation of their brand, their identity, who they are, what they're about, their plot, their character, their setting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the second piece is interactive media. So uh, kind of virtual places. And then the third piece is design that you actually walk into. So three dimensional space. So everything from master planning, interior design, architecture, um, we make it happen. So That's we have awesome. fun. And so churches can tell not just the capital S story of Jesus and, and the plan of salvation, but they can also tell their unique story through buildings, um, the, the features that surround their buildings, landscaping, all of that can be part of telling the story as Absolutely, well as their story. Absolutely, yeah. When you talk about kind of the meta narrative, you know, I right. guess, of uh, from creation to brokenness to redemption, you know, we're all on that kind of meta narrative story arc together, right? And we're all telling that same version of God's meta narrative, or our, at least our version of it, right? right? And we're trying to invite people into that that arc, right? Yeah. From creation to brokenness, redemption of the universe, of the world of, of them and their life. What we found though, the most effective way of getting people engaged in that is to, to drill down to the nuances of uh, the church's unique character, setting, and plot. Again, the, the characters are psychographics, demographics. Um, who are we designing for? I mean, and not just the people in the building, but almost more importantly, sometimes the people that haven't made the decision to step foot on property or step into the building. Right. Um, what are the what are the unique locational soil specific attributes of, uh, of a site, of a neighborhood, of a community, of a region, uh, the, the cultural uh, and the physical geographic uh, things? I mean, pay, paying attention to you know, the way people have kind of, you know, done and, and done life and, and lived and inhabit, inhabited these, these environments. I mean, a, a church in downtown Manhattan shouldn't look the same as a church in Africa. Uh, or or Anaheim. So, yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. so understanding that kind of that matrix of where you are from kind of rural settings to urban settings and doing something that's kind of contextual and appropriate makes sense. And then the third thing it's a big deal for us is the, the idea of the plot, the, the story arc. What, what keeps that plot moving forward? And that's that passion of the leadership that we believe is Holy Spirit, God-given, apostolic esprit, in the words of a friend of mine, uh, Will Mancini. What is it that is their unique take on, on driving uh, things forward and overcoming obstacles? And when we take those three story layers and we intersect them, we get this kind of uh, Venn diagram <laughs> overlap that we call the big idea. But we found that that can really inform thousands of multidisciplinary design decisions that really uh, ultimately is a, the same secret formula that makes you know, Disney the top human magnets on the planet, 
you know, that internal consistency, that design logic where everything means everything, everything is marching towards that same drummer. By the way, God, you know, did the same thing in the tabernacle. You know, everything, all the details told a consistent story. Everything meant everything. God was in and into the details. And um, so that's kind of just the simple, um, I, I think, uh, special sauce, I guess, of, of what we do uh, in spatial storytelling. Uh, it's like but God, was, God was the first Imagineer. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you were shaped because of your years at Disney, where you worked under some of that discipline and learned some of those, yeah, some little, of those ideas. Yeah, a little about 10 years of brain damage okay. incurred there and lessons learned. And never thought, you know, frankly, my dad worked at Disney. Some of my earliest memories were there. I thought, uh, you know, I thought that I would retire there. I remember one of my earliest memories, my dad telling me about kids that would jump off the boat at parts of the Caribbean, try to spend the night in the Caribbean village. and. <laughs> me thinking you shouldn't have told me that because that was an awesome idea i want to try that sometime and so that was kind of that got me fixated on the idea of what if you could let guests um kind of extend the magic spend the night in that matrix in that in that bubble in that dream state and so we end up getting to do that right outside uh, down the street here at the grand californian uh hotel uh which is the, the first hotel that's actually built inside of a theme park um so that was a that was a lot of fun and that just kind of was the, the, the start of me kind of thinking, how can we kind of push this internal logic, uh, design intervention, spatial storytelling outside the boundaries of the traditional eight hour day theme park guest experience. And it helped me kind of blur the lines and tear down the, the walls, you know, in terms of thinking about sacred space a little bit differently than a lot of people had previously. And so today in your workshop that you're doing, you're gonna be talking more about some of those principles that you learned and then how churches can use them to tell a better story yeah hopefully through their building well, in a way I'm um, you know again if I if I had the gift of verbal storytelling <laughs> which I clearly don't <laughs> I would have been a preacher or an evangelist right. or a missionary I was too chicken to do any of that and, and wise enough to realize that I probably too are inarticulate because I couldn't complete a sentence without saying dude at least twice growing <laughs> up with that said um, really the story I'm telling is kind of just my story my testimony and in a lot of ways in a weird way how that actually paralleled Walt Disney's something I didn't really realize till later in life. Um, I actually started off in film, production design, and like Walt Disney, kind of got bored with that two-dimensional frame and wanted to kind of get people to step into the screen, into the third dimension. Uh, so then I got my master's in architecture, master planning, and um, and again, and towards the end of his life, uh, on his deathbed, he actually saw himself as more of an urban planner trying to figure out how to create a city on a hill, this experimental prototype community of tomorrow that could show people in the mid-60s how to deal with some of the same issues plaguing us today with uh, race riots going on across the country and just how to how to do life uh, how to get along you know and and um and so it's kind of that same quest for community for kind of uh you know creating places that facilitate a, a great horizontal connection not just within our families but beyond our families to our neighbors and strangers uh, as well as vertical connection uh, with creation that's something sustainable but also with the crater and so that restoring that cross-shaped uh, shalom, that broken connection, that broken shalom. I think it's what a lot of us are called to, but I think uh, whatever, I've got maybe a little different angle on that uh, for my own personal calling, so it's been fun. So what are some projects that you and uh, Plain Joe are working on right now that you're really excited about? Can you give us I might on. have to kill you. Okay, no, just kidding. Right. <laughs> well, just getting ready to sign a, a retainer with uh, uh, SeaWorld Parks and Recreation, which again, you know, outside of the church context, yeah. to me it is all about restoring that connection with creation. And uh, you may have heard they've got some PR issues. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, they're on an exciting journey uh, to, uh, again, connect families while also connecting people with creation. And um, love the leadership there um, and friends with the, the CEO there, Chief Creative Officer there for years. And, you know, that journey towards using the power of immersive spatial storytelling as opposed to just getting these massive crowds into a big aluminum arena watching you know kind of captured mammals do their thing you know you know we think there's uh, some potential uh, as we move forward with that said churches in scotland in um, perth australia i'm actually getting ready to fly out to celebrate the opening of the last phase of a good friend of mine true north church uh dean out there uh, and then also kick off their next phase um, uh, so we're, we're just having a blast uh, kind of with, uh, you know, friends and clients that uh, I've known for years and that have kind of followed me on the journey. So That's awesome. So exciting to hear about some of the ways that God is using you because there are so many ways to communicate the story of God besides just being up in a pulpit. 
and so yeah. I, I love to hear I'm almost it. glad that I wasn't very good at that, because <laughs> <laughs> so, otherwise uh, And now you can I say dude as much as you client. want, right? <laughs> not, you a can... probably, uh, not a very good one. <laughs> you um, can just say dude all the time now. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Jen.